saying, oh, we're going to make the Final Four. We're not. Obviously, we've never done it. So what a historic season. what Williams has been able to do to even get their birth into the national semifinal. It's quite incredible topping off. What a goal there by Emily Batchelor. She's got herself a half. And that one goes in. An absolute strike there. Catherine Torrent. What were your general thoughts on the season? I would say my general thoughts on the season are just, yeah, just the best way to end my like my field hockey career. I think I couldn't have asked for a better season for my senior year. I think our freshman year and then our junior year, the two good seasons, really, I feel like we were like knocking on the door of the NCAA tournament both those years. We were really building our team. I think we were getting better each year. And I think this year was just the culmination of all that hard work, which I think was really awesome. I couldn't have like imagined a better season for my senior year. Um, I mean, going as far as we did was obviously incredible. Like we had never done that in our time. Um, but like starting freshman year until now, we had never made it as far as we did. So like that was exciting in itself. Um, and I think also like being uh, in season for that long, like we were able to really like mesh as a team um, and bond like a lot, which was awesome. Like I came in as a freshman, so I didn't really know what to expect. And I knew how the season ended last year for the seniors when they lost to Trinity and they lost like a whole extra month of their season and how that felt. It was cool to impress ourselves throughout the season and just prove a bunch of people wrong that didn't even think we were in the top. I think we were ranked 14 as a preseason ranking. Um, so that was our home opener weekend, um, the tough space weekend. And they were honest. They just said a bunch of us feel more nervous playing at home. Like there's just a little more pressure. So I felt, and there were maybe a few more distractions. We're pretty easy, we're all, including myself, easily distracted. So maybe being at home, we're like, oh, there's my family, there's this. first home in Puerto Rican, which we lost to both Tufts and Bates in overtime. Um, that's definitely a tough way to start our season, but I think in a way, because we lost those two games, we had to like really reevaluate, you know, our structure, how we played, our mindset going into the games. It kind of forced us to like take a look at everything and then figure out where things were breaking down, which I think was a good thing in a way. So the, the Tufts game, we actually were up like 2 nothing. Um, and then they came back and won it in overtime. Bates was also an overtime loss. 
Um, and I think what that kind of forced us to do, honestly, like early on, which was kind of good, is like really evaluate like who we are as a team and like how we're gonna how we're gonna handle like handle the hard. Um, and we kind of like implemented a few different like um, like strategies, I guess, or like things that we wanted to like like make sure we were doing. Like at halftime, we started doing like team shout outs um, to kind of like move past the first first half and like go into the second half kind of fresh slate. Um, which was super effective because I think that was one of the problems that first weekend is like we kind of like at halftime we didn't really use it as a reset we kind of just got complacent I think with the with the leads that we had or like being tied um, but like I think going into the second half like completely new like completely like on fire is like something that we really worked on um, and that's kind of how we moved on with the rest of our season and we're able to like be pretty successful like in our second halves. You know those the back-to-back -back overtime losses to Bates and Tufts that was really, that's like a kick in the gut, but, and I feel like we could have um, felt sorry for ourselves and kind of, you know, distanced ourselves from that. Rather, I felt we confronted it and we embraced it and we said, all right, we're going to use this to help us get better. This We now know what it feels like to lose. We know what it feels like to lose a close game and then two of them back to back. And how do we not let this um, ruin the beginning of our season or ruin our outlook, you know? Why and and again, just reining it back in and trying to take things one game at a time, one day at a time. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my we get to go and play them in the NESCAC tournament, and we love playing on their AstroTurf. It's a beautiful, brand new AstroTurf. Um, so I felt again, we started that game. We we were so locked in. We really we had our kind of everybody knew what their role was, what we were trying to accomplish, and I felt like wow. We really executed. Rolls to Bachelor. Bachelor backhand to Catherine Torres. Takes a shot and scores. Catherine Torres opens the scoring for Williams. This game cannot go into overtime. Like we need to win now. So like I just remember being like literally everything you got. Like it's gotta be it's gotta be on the field right now. Um, so we had like a really amazing press. Like got we ended up sending the ball back. Um, and then Liz made like an amazing pass to Kiki, who just had like an incredible shot. Came dangerously close to Williamson there. Bachelor did take it away. Can Williams get a late winner? Bachelor. Scarcella rolls it into the circle. Coming to the net, a shot to go. Higgins with 13 seconds to play. By Higgins. And this one is over. Williams advances to the semifinal. also avenged our loss from earlier in the season um, and no better way than to beat Amherst on their field so <laughs> pretty cool and then we knew um, and then as the further you get in NESCACs like the the higher chance you get density to play so it's a very very fun game <laughs> fun outcome. Hello and welcome to the 2022 NCAA Division III Field Hockey Selection Show. I'm your host, Jeremiah Johnson. It is an honor and privilege to bring you this show as we know how hard all of you have worked just to be in the position to hear your school call. We know we have the talent. We know we have that ability if we're given the opportunity. And I think that's the big key. Williams is in and at large comes from the yeah! very start. Said they'll keep their fingers crossed 
hoping to book a spot in the postseason tournament. Celebrate Williams, you are in for the 12th time in program history. When we made the tournament, we were in a large bid. Um, so I think that already is kind of like a stamp of like an underdog, but like, I don't know. We were just so excited to be in the tournament that like we weren't gonna let anything stop us. Um, and we knew we had what it takes, so. <laughs> um, so to, to have us first make the tournament Wow. And and be like the first team to see it. So then there's the pressures off. You're not sitting there waiting. You're not sick to your stomach. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Um, we know nothing about Johnson and Wales. We get to play someone we know nothing about. And then to kind of see where is everybody else in the NESCAC, the teams. It, I just felt like what a gift we get to have this experience that we've all wanted for so long to go and play teams outside of our region, outside of our conference and teams that are really well respected. Welcome Johnson and Wales, JWU Providence is in as the automatic qualifier out of the great Northeast Athletic Conference, second straight conference crown thanks to a 3-1 victory against Simmons University. WNL play so I was very I was aware of they had this one player they I thought they had one really uh exceptional player I think she was she was a returning all-american um I knew that they had uh they had graduated their goalie who was I think an all-american so I thought well if we can get inside the circle I think we can you know they're gonna be it's gonna be a little bit harder on them because it's a newer it's a newer goalie. I don't feel like they have the same, they don't face the same kind of um, competition that we do week in and week out. So I felt like we had the upper hand in that sense is like where we're, we're used to being under this, a lot of pressure um, in these pressure situations. So I felt like, all right, you guys, we have to, we're going to focus on our style of play, which is obviously we play fast and furious, high pressure. Um, so our WNL game was the, was that the Sweet 16? Yeah. I think it was the Sweet 16. Um, again, like someone we never faced. Um, so you kind of, you, you respect your opponents, but as Alex always says, respect all, fear none. Um, so that's kind of, I think, the mindset we went in um, to that game with. The eighth ranked Williams Eves, representatives of the New England Small College Athletic Conference. The Eves entered today's game with a 13 to five record and are making their 12th appearance in the NCAA tournament.
in the final score, one and three, Washington and Louisiana. So excited that we played so well, executed our game plan. Um, Washington Lee was certainly a difficult and challenging game, and I felt like we had to work hard for every inch. I just know they're good. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're undefeated. <laughs> and actually, I, for the so I've been a little superstitious this year or two. I'm like, don't watch the game, don't study the film to one game at a time. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna be doing some serious studying tonight. <laughs> but went to the game today. I mean, clearly, just I mean, Dawn's a legend. So um, well coached team. I think uh, they're great from top to bottom. So we're gonna have to show up and bring our best game. And that's what we're motivated to do. I think. I think at least the vibe I was getting from the team and from myself was just we were really confident going into that game. We never played them before, so there were no like kind of mental games we had to play. Like there's no intuition to how they would be. But I think going in, we knew we were a really good team, and we knew they were going to be a good team. But we were confident that like we could come out on top. I think we came out knowing what was on the line, and we weren't afraid at all. How do we, we don't even know how we stack up against them. So I think that was the exciting part. Here's a team who's 18 and 0, and I had one opportunity to play, watch them play the day before we played them. And, you know, like you just said, our team is the type of team we have, well, we have the saying, it's um, respect all, fear none. So the whole thing was like, there's nothing to be afraid of here. We're going to, we are going to see how we measure up against who the, who the field hockey world thinks is the number one team in the nation. Uh, as I just said to you, I was like, I'm not even sure what I'm saying. I feel like I'm still in shock, but overjoyed, thrilled, so proud, um, so excited. It's just a mix of a million emotions, but and but most of all, I'm so proud of how hard we played and how well we executed our game plan. So when we scored in the fourth quarter, I was like, oh my god, like we're gonna do this. Like this is oh was so sick. Like everyone was so pumped, like post game, like we were all just like, we deserve to be here. I kind of slid I mean, we knew we deserved to be there, but like I kind of solidified it for us that we were like, yeah, like we're like we're really good. Like this is gonna be it's gonna be amazing. And it was. Like that was a great game. And I kept thinking, I'm like, oh man. And our practice was so sensational. It was it was shocking to me. And the the coach that was there covering it said, she said to me after the whole weekend, she goes, I knew after I saw you guys practice, you were gonna win the whole the win the whole thing. Um, and even at the final four dinner, I think there was the way they were explaining the season's past and then ours just seemed like it was weird that we were there. I mean, we hadn't won any conference thing. We um beat we ended up there even though teams that beat us earlier in the season weren't there, like Tufts and Bates and Amherst. And I guess as much as other people might have been confused or like even while we were at the final four surprise that we got there, um, I think in our like as a team we knew that we deserved to be there. So it didn't really matter what other people thought. Yeah, I mean going into it, going into the Johns Hopkins game, um, I was a little bit nervous. I mean, I was nervous for all the games, but we had come back to beat so many teams as the underdog for weekends before that. So 
that was less of a fear factor. And I think we all already made it to that point. So I think we felt proud of ourselves and I think that did help us. I mean, the game was very close. Fourth ranked Johns Hopkins Blue Jays and the eighth ranked Williams Eves. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here at NCAA.com. <laughs> game like back and forth I'd say in the we kind of struggled in the first quarter and second quarter a little bit too um, with like having sustained offense um, but we did get some chances like here and there um, obviously their goal was like a, they they scored and then they like, called it no goal and they reviewed it which is only they only did on the final four so had it been like any other game would have been no goal side from the penalty corner inserter now Burke winds one and fire ricochet does it count yes it does Johns Hopkins, no, it's waved off. The hand came up from the official. The celebration started, and they're trying to continue it, and they're going to stop play. So the ruling on the field was a no goal. So after the umpires had to review with this, Hopkins thought that uh, they had the right to review, so they wanted to have the umpires take a look at it to see You know, it's like you never want to like blame the refs or any officiating because you know it's always it's so it's so hard to do that. Um, but I think when we got that goal, there was like a moment of like, all right, Eric, we got this, we're in this, you know. And we were like knocking on the door, scoring in the Hopkins game. I think so many times, we had so many close calls, and just to get that call back really just sucked off because I think I forget if we tried for the video review or something, and like it was it somehow wasn't able to happen, which kind of sucks because that's how they got their goal. You weren't allowed to like ask questions, or it felt like that. You couldn't ask what was going on, so you couldn't get real interpretation. So the whole time you're just at their mercy, like, I don't know what they're calling. And I felt that their goal, their initial shot was high. I was like, there's no way that that should be coming out. And I thought that's what they were calling in the first place. But then the other piece that kind of was new to all of us was the video review. So we had talked about it, like, and I have, total faith and trust in any of our players on the field if they think there's something worthy of video review. Like, I would never get mad at them, but you only get one. So you have to use it wisely, you know? So when they used it on that first goal, I'm like, oh my, okay, I guess that's a goal. There's nothing I can do, and it's early enough in the game that we can we can bounce back from it. Um, and yeah, again, I just felt like I was at the mercy of these calls that I didn't really understand. Johns Hopkins can taste it. The final 10 seconds of this 2022 Division III Field Hockey Championship semifinal. Two seconds and one. And there is the final whistle. And the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays are going back to the national championship game for the second consecutive season. one nothing winners over the Williams Eves in the semifinals this afternoon in South Jersey. It just wasn't one of those games that you want to end on being like, oh, we, you know, I, but at the same time, you're also like, well, so proud of the team, so proud of what we've done. Sad to see this, sad to see this come to an end because obviously such a special team, such a special group of seniors. Um, but I didn't find it as difficult to kind of t swallow it in the moment because I think the bigger picture is, what we did accomplish and we should be proud of ourselves and we can't be, what's the point of being, um, you know, having sour grapes or being a sulker? Yeah, the Hopkins game was definitely a tough, a tough loss. I mean, unfortunately you're always gonna end your season on a loss unless you're a national champion. So <laughs> it's tough to end the season on a loss, but you know, as I mean, losing the final four isn't as bad as, you know, losing way or like a month earlier in the season. Um, but I think going into that game, 
I think we also all felt confident. I think there were probably more nerves just because it was at the bigger stage. Um, it, it was a really close game. I think Johns Hopkins' defense was really, really inc like incredible.